We live in a modern, hyper-connected world where everything is becoming smart and connected. Curious about what lies ahead and how this will impact your daily life? I'm Brett Jordan, and this is Smarter Everything, a podcast on the future of connectivity, powered by Afero. We live in a world full of new and interesting and intriguing technologies, some of which can do amazing things and make our lives so much easier. However, for the longest time, these technologies have been cumbersome, unreliable, difficult to use, hard to find, and often part of an ecosystem that does not have depth or breadth. For decades, many have dreamed of a day when technology would enable a home like the Jetsons from the classic cartoon. But is this Jetsons home really that far away? Or as William Gibson has said, the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. If that is truly the case, then what is needed to jump across the chasm and go from interesting niche and nascent technologies to mainstream consumer products? The answer, in my opinion, is simplicity, ease of use, and a massive distribution channel that has a vision to make the smart and connected world a reality. In today's episode of Smarter Everything, we will be talking with Nick Millette, the leader of the Home Depot's Smart and Connected program. We will talk about how the Home Depot got started in this space, why they got involved, and a little bit about their vision for this smart and connected home. Please join us today as we take a look at the amazing things the Home Depot is doing to make everyone's life a little easier and a little more connected. Here is my conversation with Nick. It's good to have you on the podcast today, Nick, uh, here on Smarter Everything. Uh, hopefully we can talk a little bit about what it is you do and kind of where things are at in this smart and connected space and kind of how you see this market shaping up. So do you want to introduce yourself a little bit here? Yeah, sure. So my name is Nick Millet. I'm the product development merchant for Smart Home at Home Depot. So my job is to bring Home Depot's proprietary branded products into the smart home space across all the product categories that we have in our store. So what do you mean by the proprietary brand? It's the brands that Home Depot owns. So we have Defiant, Eco Smart, Hampton Bay, Husky. Those are actually Home Depot's brands where we, we go out and source the products ourselves and, and bring them into the stores uh, through the Home Depot. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. And so then you would, uh, your private label brands then would compete with national brands for shelf space and also market penetration. That's right. That's right. So for example, in door locks, you might have a Schlage or a quick set door lock on the shelf. So that's a national brand. And then you'll have a defiant door lock, which is actually our Home Depot proprietary brand. We went out, spec that product and bought it directly from the manufacturer. Oh, that's really neat. So I know that you've been doing a lot in the smart and connected space at Home Depot for many years. What can you tell us about your experience with this new and upcoming hyper-connected world of smart and connected? My journey in smart home started in late 2016, 2017. We have a role in Home Depot called the assortment planning team. And that team really focuses on doing analytics. So I was the first assortment planner that we had for smart home. And it's, you know, what product should we have on the shelf? What product should we sell where and why? And all the analytics behind that. So got all the way to the bottom of the rabbit hole on the analytics for smart home. And at that time, the, the opportunity was pretty clear. We just needed better products on the shelf. So I kind of pivoted and viewed my role as trying to go out and find the best new and upcoming products and get them in front of our merchants to possibly bring them into the Home Depot store. So I tested every product known to mankind back in 2016, 2017, 2018. And there was a lot of really confusing, bad smart home tech out there. It was really hard to figure out. Nothing worked with anything else. You had everything from smart egg holders to smart plugs. And it was just a very unusual space and time to be in it. But it was also very exciting because everybody was trying to figure out what makes sense to make smart, what's the value add to the customer and really trying to figure that out. And it was really growing very quickly. Still is growing very quickly. And I think as the space continues to evolve, the important part will be how do all of these things kind of work together? And really, how do we 
do right by the customers in terms of things they might not even understand or know, we are the advocate for the customer. We're putting something on the shelf to make sure that we're doing it in a safe and responsible way. That's really neat. And I think you have a lot of background in, you know, outside of Home Depot with caring a little bit about some of these things and being a little more meticulous and a little bit more consumer conscious. Before starting at Home Depot, I was a federal government contractor doing federal ERP systems. I kind of grew up through the era of the FedRAMP certified cloud, the first time like the government using cloud computing and how important cybersecurity was there. So as the project manager over teams that had very mature cybersecurity organizations, I got a very firm grasp and understanding of how important that is, what a mature cybersecurity approach looks like. And it was kind of built into everything we did in those days because it was U.S. federal government takes that very seriously. So I, I had a bit of a unique background in terms of cybersecurity and being hyper aware of the importance of that. So when I started at Home Depot, I didn't start in Smart Home, but eventually moved my way over to Smart Home. That's always something that's kind of been in the forefront of my brain is, you know, what is the cybersecurity of these products? How are we protecting the consumer? What are the things that we're putting in place to truly really make sure that people that may not fully understand why a light bulb needs to have security, who cares if somebody hacks into my light bulb, why things like that actually matter when they don't. We had a discussion um, on this podcast a couple of weeks ago with Dr. Hugh Thompson and talked a lot about the security of a light bulb. And I know I gave a talk to the financial services ISAC about eight years ago on the security of banks. So the ISAC is the Information Sharing and Analysis Center for the financial services community. And I gave a talk about you know the security of a light bulb and how that is a, an attack surface and a risk vector in the future for banks and how we need to start looking at this from a different perspective. And, and that was eight years ago. And, and so we talked a little bit about this uh, with Hugh a couple episodes ago on this podcast, but I think it's very interesting and it's something that a lot of people don't normally pay attention to. You know, you have to make sure that every device inside your environment, inside your home is secure because if anyone is not, then that's a crack in the foundation. And that's all a threat actor needs to get in and then move laterally. So you're doing a lot of smart and connected products inside of Home Depot, with a lot of national brands, and um, you're starting to do some smart and connected products on your private label brands. So what made Home Depot prioritize this? And you know, why are they investing in these connected products? There's some companies that have tried and have failed, but you are investing in this and, and moving this forward. So can you give us a little bit of information about like what's going on there and, and why you decided to prioritize this? True Smart Home, in my opinion, goes way beyond you know the consumer electronic categories of cameras and voice assistants and really gets into categories like door locks, ceiling fans, the true knit and grit of a home, like sump pumps. Those are product categories where Home Depot is the market share leader in this space. That is one of the main reasons why Home Depot is looking at it. And from my opinion, our private brands has a very, very unique uh, position in that, in that space where we are one source, one platform, if you will, of brands that crosses all of those verticals. So you have lots of individual product brands that might be very good at making light bulbs or exterior lighting is another brand or someone who's good at making a door lock. But those are disparate brands in product categories. Home Depot's private brands, we cross pretty much every product category that you sell in a Home Depot store. By putting the infrastructure in place to allow our proprietary brands to enter the smart home space in a safe and responsible way, I can now take that same infrastructure and lay it across door locks, ceiling fans, light bulbs, light switches in one solution for the customer. So it simplifies the, the experience for the mass market of not needing five different apps, five different ways of setting products up. And it also makes sure if we do the security right one time, it makes sure that customers have the same level of security in a light bulb that you're gonna have on a door lock. So that's why we're investing in that space. We see the opportunity there. Yeah, you see the opportunity, you see what the national brands are doing, you kind of, through your analytics that you talked about before, you're seeing the trends of the market, 
you know, and there's also a lot of, you know, consumer report come out, you know, talking about the whole smart and connected market, you know, and the overall size over the next five years. And I know Home Depot is going to be a huge part of that based upon your capacity, your reach, your supply chain, um, and the number of people that, you know, we all love Home Depot, right? It's the place we go. And like I tell my wife, if you don't make it to Home Depot, you know, three or four times on a Saturday, then it's not really a good Saturday. Maybe if I spend a little more time planning, you know, my, my projects, then I'd only make one trip, but I end up making three or four. So I joke with my wife is like, well, take the number of times you think I have to go to Home Depot to get a job done and multiply it by four. And that's the reality. Yeah. I end up at Home Depot like at least twice if I need to change a doorknob because yeah. I forget something. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's a running joke in my household as well. <laughs> So you're doing some things now uh, with your private label brands in this smart and connected space. Can you talk a little bit about what you're actually doing here? What we are doing is what we've always done. We partner with the best manufacturers of product categories in the world and bring those products directly into our stores without you know, the layers in between to get the best possible value products with great features and product quality on our shelf at a great price point. We are still, you know, partnering with the best manufacturer of light bulbs in the world, the best manufacturer of door locks in the world or ceiling fans in the world, and then allowing them to focus on their core competency of your best in the world at making this product. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're the best in the world at making that connected product or Internet of Things or mobile app or cybersecurity. We've taken the other side where I went out and scoured the earth to find who I felt was best in the world at making things connected from doing it responsibly, doing it safely, doing it ease of setup, the customer experience of making it seamless and partner with them and putting the two together. So really what we've always done, but now we also just brought in another third party that is best in the world at making the product connected. And that's what we call Hubspace. So Hubspace is our Home Depot's platform for smart home products, and it's built by the Alfaro team out in California in partnership with some of the best product manufacturers in the world, bringing the two together and getting products on our shelf. So you have a lot of private label brands. And so through your Hubspace platform, do they share a common app then and a, a common experience? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. I use Intel inside a lot to kind of equate it, what we're doing. So we have eco smart light bulbs powered by Hubspace. We have commercial electric recess lighting powered by Hubspace. We have Hampton Bay ceiling fans powered by Hubspace. We have Defiant door locks powered by Hubspace. So Hubspace is a kind of that connectivity tissue that flows amongst them. It's also the name of the mobile app and, and the platform behind it. So it's kind of a Intel inside for our private brands. Oh, that is very neat. So if customers want to participate, then they can go to Home Depot and then they just look for products that say, you know, powered by Hubspace. That has been the challenging part, in all honesty, is you'll have a EcoSmart light bulb on the shelf that people are used to seeing, having that differentiate from the normal EcoSmart light bulb when you do a smart one. But we're growing up in that space and figuring out the right way to, to show it to the customer. So if you go to stores, you sh should start seeing that kind of reddish orange Hubspace logo in a lot more places throughout our store. Yeah, I've noticed that at my local uh, Home Depot that I go to. There, There's two. We have the normal big one, which is just slightly further away. But then we have like a little neighborhood one, which we call the mini Home Depot because it, it's a much smaller property. But I'm starting to see this Hubspace stuff show up there. And uh, it's very neat. I've, I've purchased quite a few. I know my wife loves them. Um, I mentioned on one of my uh, previous podcasts, I buy these little um, Defiant smart plugs, these Hubspace smart plugs. I put them up for the Christmas tree and all the Christmas stuff because my wife loves the fact that she can get on her phone, get on the Hubspace app and just say, you know, a group and turn on Christmas. And, and obviously we're not in Christmas anymore, but, you know, whether it's Easter or whatever holiday and then everything in the house for that season just turns on. And so she really loves that. And so I started going around my neighborhood and passing out these smart plugs to everybody for all of their Christmas trees and all their decorations, because it's really nice. Like you don't have to get down on the ground and, you know, crawl in behind something to plug something in, or you don't have to use one of those really old mechanical timers, which are just a nightmare to figure out. You get on the app and you say at sunrise or sunset or at eight in the morning, when my kids get up, you know, or seven in the morning, whatever, you know, turn on the Christmas tree or turn on this, turn on that. You hit exactly what the main goal is. True smart home with the home automation and the house of the Jetsons of the future where everything's automated, things like that. In all honesty, for the, the normal consumer, we're not there yet in terms of being able to give that experience to that customer. Nobody is. Like You may be able to 
pay a third party to come in and automate out your house and we'll sit and interview you and all the stuff. You, some people may be able to get to that point, but really smart home today is more of about like the sunset time changes in my house throughout the year. And I don't want to have to go down and change the, the pins on the mechanical timer as the year changes. I just want to be able to say, have this light turn on at sunset every day and it will automatically change based on the new sunset time every day or putting a PIR sensor photo cell on a light that might be in the shadows. So you have the light turning on with the photo cell in the middle of the day when it's not supposed to because of a shadow, just being able to say sunrise or sunset on the light bulb actually makes things a heck of a lot simpler for the customer. That's really where we've kind of focused on is like, what are the very easy use cases? We're not trying to sell the Jetson house of everything operates by itself and all these automations. It's what's the very easy use case of sunrise, sunset, or, you know, at 2 a.m. I want my lights to turn off. I don't want them to stay on all the, all the way through the night till sunrise. Um, very easy things like that. Obviously, the technologists and the hobbyists and the people that like to tinker like to have all of these really advanced automations and these if then statements and all of this stuff, you know, for this automation in their home. But that's really a small market. And I don't think that's who Home Depot typically caters to. And so when I was doing some analysis of the IoT space, it seems like the average mass market user is comfortable with a certain level of automation. And I think it's the automation that you're talking about. But all of the more advanced things, I think, scare the general mass. And so I don't think the general populace is, is ready for that. Maybe five, 10 years from now, we'll get to more advanced things. But I think you're really trying to target the mass market and and what they really want and how do we make their lives easy and not scare them. Smart home, connected home have been stuck in this chasm for a very long time of you had the early adopters, the technologists who could put all the automations, the written scenes together and do the if this, then that sequence themes and applets and all of that. But the average consumer, it was just way too much getting them at least to dip their toe in the water of getting a smart plug so that you don't have to reach around the Christmas tree and pull it out or having a light that turns on at sunset and turns off at 2 a.m. Those very easy use cases is really how you drag everybody out of the chasm of like, you at least got to get started on this journey for the mainstream market because the technologists and the hobbyists are great, but they're a very, very small part of that marketplace. And the mainstream consumer isn't just going to fall into this huge automation thing. They're not going to devote the time and the energy into building that out. It's a crawl, walk, run. We have to start getting people on that progression at the mainstream market of at least getting used to having connected devices in their house with very easy, simple use cases. Yeah. And, you know, I think the goal is to make things just really, really brain dead simple. I know in a previous episode, we talked about electricity coming into the home, like in the 1920s in that time frame. Um, and, you know, running water and stuff, but that when electricity first came, people were like, do I really want this? Like, this is scary. This might burn my house down. And you have to get eventually to a comfort level where you're like, oh yes, like I do want electricity. There is one very important part of this is I'm not a car guy. I've gone to a mechanic and had someone say, to fix your truck, it's going to be $6,000 worth of parts. And then took it to another mechanic around the corner who I had seen out on a walk. And he's like, oh, it's this. $15 little part that I have to change in there. It, it's that level of knowledge disconnect between what somebody else knows and what you know that can cause problems. With smart home, there's two main pillars that we focused on when building help space. One was the ease of product setup. It has to be so easy that grandma and I can set up the smart plug. You do have to be able to download a mobile app and just scan a QR code, but that's it. That was how simple it has to be. None of this 2.4 versus 5.0 gigahertz or all these other different things that could go wrong. You had to simplify that down. And then the other one that was completely immovable, in my opinion, was the cybersecurity. People don't know about what is secure, what's not secure. I was a completely immovable object on the fact that absolutely uncompromising in cybersecurity. And that's where we partner with the Afero team. And it's very, very important to be the advocate for the customer because the customer doesn't know about security, cybersecurity, and frankly, they shouldn't have to. We should be doing the job of protecting them from the things that they don't necessarily need to know about. A lot of people don't know how electricity works, but you know, if you buy an extension cord from any reputable retailer, it's a UL list or a tech list, it's not going to burn down your house. We have to take that same level of 
care for our customers and be the customer's advocate when we're building connected products for them. Yeah, I, I know my experience for the past 25 years has been in the cybersecurity space, and it always baffled me why products would come along with all of these different options of varying levels of security from no security, letting you turn it off, to all these various parameters to maybe turn it on or, or turn more on. Is, are you doing things like that in Hubspace, or is it more of just on-off, or, or what do you do? Do you have the product? It is secure. It's not something that is an option, in my opinion. Some people may know enough to understand what we're doing or we're not doing, but the majority of people don't, and we're just doing it on their behalf as their advocates. Like we need to protect our customers and have great cybersecurity in our products. It's it's a non-negotiable fact. I want to pull on that thread, you know, about some of the problems and think what, how you define success for your program. But one thing I want to mention for our listeners is another example I recently heard about these these smart plugs. A lot of times people will plug things in that you know, you shouldn't leave plugged in. Uh, maybe like for people that curl their hair or they use a flat iron on their hair. But if you use these smart plugs, these defiant smart plugs you get at Home Depot, you can always, if you leave the house, instead of having to turn around and drive back home because you can't remember whether or not you unplugged it, you can just look on your phone and say, oh, I let, did leave it on and just turn it off. And so that's that's really a, a fantastic use case. I have never had a curling iron, but but I have a four month old daughter. I assume I will have one in my my house here soon enough. I I have always heard that as the example of the curling iron that gets left on and burns down the house. There's all sorts of things that customers have in their house that can be a very material risk safety wise that if left on for too long, that just being able to oh, I'm away from home. Is that on or is it off? And it's also like the garage door opener yeah. example of like, did I close the garage door or not? You're sitting on the airplane of, oh God, did I? Yeah. It's those very easy things of getting that assurance that I actually did what I thought I did. It, being able to double check in your phone is a huge value out to customers. Oh, it does. And I think it's, you know, I think that's a value that you're bringing to the table through, you know, what you know and what you're doing at Home Depot is you're solving real world problems at the comfort level that customers have, instead of trying to create these solutions that are for t- problems of the of the future that you know that consumers don't have today, and so when I've done some analysis of various companies that have tried and, and quite honestly failed at their you know, their smart home product and their their deployments and whatnot, I'm kind of coming around to this idea that maybe it's just because they don't have you, like like every company needs Nick to kind of be the one that drives it because like you have this vision and you understand, you know, from your background and kind of what you're trying to do and you have this uncompromising view and so I think that you know a lot of it probably is tied back to you know you and kind of what you're doing. Well, I appreciate the ego boost there. It, it is. Definitely not a, not a me thing. I might have been the, the right guy in the right place at the right time. But I, I think our success is really a combination of, of a lot of different factors, a perfect storm, if you will. First, I mean, it's in the DNA of what Home Depot is as a company. And if you read the Built from Scratch book that, that's written by our founders, it is the entrepreneurial spirit and putting the customer first has been there since day one at the company. And I'm here a whole lot of days later. And that has not changed. I absolutely love working for this company because the main thing they do is they do the right thing, period. And is protect the customer, do right by the customer, do right by your associates and having that entrepreneurial spirit that is in the DNA of who they are. And they support people like myself who have ideas of ways we think we can add shareholder value, protect the customer and have that entrepreneurial spirit. I have had fantastic leaders at Home Depot who have supported me along the way and pressure test this nine ways from Sunday to make sure we really are doing the right thing for the customer. Cause it's easy to say, it's very hard to prove and home people will put you through the pressure cooker, the pressure test of this. This has been, this isn't something that magically showed up. This is five, six years of being pressure tested every angle from fantastic leaders who are very supportive, highly intelligent, very good at their jobs, making sure that we're doing the right thing. The other part is finding the right partner. I honestly found a Pharaoh through a podcast, comically enough. It was, it was a commercial on a, on a podcast and it was Joe Britt. And he said, the two things that we are focused the most on is cybersecurity. You know, we have the same level of security in a, in a light bulb that you should have in a door lock. And two was setting up a product. It needs to be seamless and foolproof of every time you go to set up a product, it gets set up. I was like, 
I need to talk to that guy. So finding the right partner is highly, highly important. And then having the right team, both the Affero team and my team inside Home Depot are fantastic. They are the definition of grit and scrappy. We're both very small organizations who work extremely hard, dedicated. It takes a lot of grit to basically run into the same wall nonstop day after day, no matter how bloody you, get, you are, but still get up the next day, excited to go to work and run into that same wall again. And then having suppliers who are best in the world. So our ceiling fan manufacturers, our light bulb manufacturers are the best manufacturers in the world. So it's kind of like the perfect world of all these perfect things came together. I just happen to be the guy lucky enough to be responsible for it. That is so neat and, and so inspiring for a lot of people that, you know, are going to listen to this podcast and when they think about how they want to drive their program. Nick, this has been an amazing conversation today. Thank you for coming. Um, but for our listeners, do not worry. This amazing conversation is not yet over. We'll be talking again in a couple weeks for part two. Thank you so much for joining us today for this episode of Smarter Everything. We really love feedback, so please consider taking a moment to send us a comment or a rating on Apple Podcasts. And if you have time and you like this episode, please consider subscribing. We'll see you next time for Smarter Everything.